Well, hello everybody. Welcome to my lovely, yummy, delicious colors of beads on my bead mat today. I'm Leslie Rogowski, creative director for The Beadsmith, and I have been playing with different shaped beads in a line of colors called Bondelli. And wow, do you guys like these? And I can't say I blame you. These soft finish matte, slightly matte colors are saturated like the most expensive gelatos that I've ever seen. They're just delicious and yummy. Those are the words that keep coming to my mind. And when you use them in your work, they bring this this life to them, this this tropical island summer dessert, fun, whimsical, carnival almost colors. And they're in every shape bead that we have out here. Super duos, gem duos, paisley duos, my uh, partner in crime here, Leslie Pope, made these mandalas for me with some of the different colors. And I've been hearing like people say they look like you could eat them and they look like Necco wafers. And we are just having the best time with these. So what I wanted to teach you to work with these colors today is a very basic project. Everybody seemed real excited about. I have peyote stitched gem duo beads in a kind of rainbow effect of with the Bondelli colors, three of them, and I've incorporated, of course, the fabulous symbol metal fashion elements. So in your bracelet, we're going to start with an ending, the Vanny 3, and we're going to incorporate sides and bead substitutes like this and it's a very basic stitch but in order to disguise the thread when you turn around as you're going to weave back and forth this way I've used 15s where the thread might show so are you ready I see a bunch of my friends watching hi Steven and Maria Louise and of course the amazing Leslie Pope, who helps me with everything I do here. I couldn't do it without you. We are Team Leslie. Woohoo! She made these little pinwheel earrings. Hi, Maria. I don't know if you guys can see everybody else's comments on the page, but it's very fun for me, even though I kind of have to pay attention to what I'm doing. So, my pieces. Hi, Kathy. Yes, creamsicles. She's saying they look like creamsicles. And you know what? It really does have that. Like when you mix vanilla ice cream into a fruit and it gives it just that, that really rich, full saturation of color, even though some people might call it pastel, they're really just very full. So here we go. Let's learn how to make the peyote cuff. How's that sound? I'll come in a little closer. Oh my God, I love these so much. Now my bracelets, I was using white fire line because I really wanted the thread to be hidden uh, underneath these letters, my uh, tail thread yet. There we go. But I'm going to use black thread. So I'm hoping that you can see it. Somebody out there, hey Jennifer, somebody tell me that you can see the black thread here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. All right, so to start with this, we're going to start with the Vanny 3 symbol finding that's designed for gem duos. And as you can see in the end of this one here, I'm going to start with a row of blue, green, green, purple. But the first thing I'm going to do is make a little stopper bead by stringing a bead down to where I'm going to leave my tail. And this is just a, 
a sample, then I'm going to show you how to get started. So I don't have a really long piece of thread. But you're going to string the bead and then you're going to go through that bead in the same direction to make a stopper bead, which is very literal. It means when you string the beads, they're not going to fall off. And this bead slides on the thread back and forth so you'll be able to pull it off really easy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I find it easier working with these to line up my beads, kind of fit them right in the way that I'm going to want to start with this finding. Now you also want to make sure that both holes are open. So I'm just going to give a peek at each of these gem duos. And you can see they have both of them have all of them have two holes it's always good to do that it's worth the extra time rather than have to take something out later there we go now the reason I'm lining up the first row here is because these this finding there was designed with the holes to match up with the holes of the beads so I want to go straight across so by laying it down on my bead mat it just allows me to get my needle through the bead and the finding all in the same stroke. There we go. Everybody can see that now, right? There's your first row. And I'm going to pull my thread up to where my stopper bead is. Now, I want you to look at the end of the bracelet that's already done right here's my tail my stopper bead out here now on this other end here I'm going to pick up a 15 and I'm going to sew back into and through the whole row of beads but not through that 15 again so I'm just going to come right back through Don't go through the stopper bead. I was just there for that. All right. Now I'm going to pick up another 15. The stopper bead's going to come off later. And I'm going to sew back into this side gem duo, the blue one, but only that, not the finding or any other beads. And the reason I do this is because I want to come out the other gem duo hole and I'm going to wrap, hide my thread inside. Okay. So there's my two little 15s on the side and my thread is coming out here. And now I'm going to sew out this other hole and the thread's going to wrap around the inside of the gem duo where it will be disguised. And you won't see it, it'll be very inconspicuous. Okay, now we're going to start picking up the symbol findings. So we're going to pick up a side, which has two holes. The rounded side is the outside. Hi, Rob. Yeah, the Bondelli colors. He's saying he loves the Bondelli colors. Me too. They really make me feel very beachy somehow. Okay, now <clears throat> I have the side and the side has two holes in it and I'm coming out the one. Now I'm going to do the same turnaround trick with another size 15. And I'm going to pick up my size 15 and pull it down to that one part of the finding. And now I'm going to sew back through. I'm going to skip the 15 I just strung. And I'm going to sew back through the symbol side and the blue gem duo on the side. So how's that look so far? Are you guys following me? You should be able to go back to this video and repeat it so that you can learn how to do this. I'm working on writing something up, but it's not done yet. Okay, so I have one side of the finding 
put in. Now I'm going to pick up my second blue gem duo. And I'm going to add that in. And I'm going to hold it up now so it'll be easier to see. There. Get the tail out of the way. We'll weave that in later. You're going to pick up a blue one, sew through the next green one. get this out of the way. Now we're going to pick up another green one and make sure you're picking it up so that it lays right. You know there's a top and a bottom to the gem duos. The bottoms, the other side, are kind of flat and these have a nice little peaked center line going through them. All right, now we're going to pick up a purple one. Bondelli. I wonder what that means. Anybody know? why they call this color family Bondelli. It does sound kind of ice cream to me now. I don't know why. All right, so we're at the other side. We're gonna pick up and do exactly what we did on this side with one of the side findings. We're gonna sew through one of them and we're gonna pick up a 15 and go back through the finding now, we already have a bead picked up here, so we're going to sew through it, and we're going to do our turnaround on this bead now for the other side. I'm going to go through here, back, so the thread lays along the inside. You can see it there, the inside of the gem duo. Now we have another gem duo to fit here to finish up this side. It's another purple one. We're gonna make sure that there's the holes are open and we're gonna pick that up and sew out through the symbol side. So you can see how you wanna keep your stitching snug here. As you do this, don't, if it's a little loose, you can pull on the previously strung beads a little bit did you see how I pulled on the 15 and then I pulled on my working thread? I'm picking up a 15, sewing back into the finding through the gem duo. This gem duo is the first one of the next row. So I'm gonna go through that as if I was picking it up and through the next one. Ta-da! Now we're ready to pick up another one of these minty green Bondelli Gem Duos. Get in there. It's always harder when you're trying to show somebody something you can do in your sleep usually. There you go. I'm trying to say on screen. All right, another green one. I want to work this until we get the sides on and one of the substitutes down the middle. It is a cool way to accent the pieces. If you're talking about the symbols and I chose silver for mine. All right, now we're gonna finish up this side. We need to pick up a blue gem duo and sew through the side component And we're going to do our little turnaround with the size 15. These are my Yuki 15s. Like that. And in order to start the second, the next row, we need to do that little trick where you hide the thread along the inside of the gem duo on the side and come out here. Now we're going to start from the beginning again, which was to add just 15s without the side component of the symbol. So let's do that and add, pick up a 15, go back through the gem duo, pick up a Bondelli blue, now in my pattern I have 
every other one of the center green bondellis is going to be a symbol gem duo substitute. I'm using one called Placa. So I'm going to pick that up and these look just like gem duos. They have the same shape and footprint. So I'm going to string that as my middle gem duo, which is going to accent down the middle of my bracelet. All right, ready to pick up a purple bondelli. Get over there and come out the side gem duo. And we're going to pick up a 15 and do our turnaround. Now, we need another bead over here because I didn't put a side on. We're going to do the turnaround that hides the thread along the side of the gem duo and we're going to pick up another purple bondelli gem duo and we're going to there we go now just for to make the pattern that I have in my bracelet here I have alternated the symbol finding for the sides with two accents of the 15s and then a side two accents so I'm going to add my second 15 and go back through the gem duo that I just picked up and the one next to it. And by the way, when you see me pulling my thread and I put my finger there, that is holding my thread so it's coming straight out of the bead hole. You don't ever want to pull your thread against the bead hole because it could, it could erode the thread actually and it can also pull your bead stitching out of place. So since I can't reach because I'm sitting behind my camera, I am using my finger as sort of a little tool to hold my thread when I pull it so the thread comes out straight from the bead hole. How's that for a tip? All right, what do I do next? I pick up a green bondelli and we're gonna work across the row, pick up a gem duo, pull the thread straight, pick up another gem duo, go through the next one, pull the thread straight, just be careful you don't get caught. Now we're going to do the second gem, do the second 15 here on the other side, but we have to pick up the bead first to keep our pattern. How many of you chase your beads around your bead net like I do? I'm always trying to, to pick them up. All right. There we go. Now we're going to put the 15 on. I'm turning around just so I can reach it. So I see lots of questions coming in and I will get to you in a minute. All right, so I have that second 15 on the other side, and now I'm gonna hide my thread. You wanna pull that really snug so the beads are snug. I'm gonna hide my thread along the inside of the gem duo. I'm gonna sew out the other side. And this is where I would pick up my next side symbol component that would fit over here, and we would just repeat what I just showed you and go all the way down until you have your bracelet like this. So the Silver Super Duos, Tamara is asking, are part of our line of findings, metal fashion elements that, that are called symbol, like the instrument, C-Y-M-B-A-L. And we have them in not only just silver, but gold which I chose for these rosy colors and we also have speaking of rosy we have rose gold and antique brass symbol findings now too to go with all your colors yeah we think they're pretty great too um, the other products I can list for you on our website um, to let you know exactly how many beads and what the actual names of the findings are so the gem duos, however, 
are the new Bondelli finish. So all of these colors that you see are the new Bondelli finish of our gem duos. Now let's see. Oh, I wanted to show you how to add the clasp when you get to the other end. How about that? All right, so here's what we do. Thanks, Becky. Uh, I'm just really having so much fun sharing this stuff with you guys. And would love to see what you make. If you post it on the Beadsmith Facebook page, we'll see it. All right, so what you want to do when you're making your bracelet, and this will be in the tutorial when I get that written up, you want to make the length of the beadwork long enough to fit around your wrist, allowing for what they call the clasp allowance. And that's the space that's going to be left after it fits your wrist to put your endings and your clasp so it fits you. So once you reach that length and you have your end, in order to get the finding on the end, see how it just fits right in there? You wanna make sure you have that 15 where you've done the turnaround and you're just going to sew right through the symbol ending for gem duos and the gem duos and make sure you don't skip a bead and you can check easily enough by flipping it over and making sure that your needle is through the beads and not behind the beads. So you're going to finish up by getting caught. No, not. You don't want to do that. Don't do that. <laughs> okay. So, oh, yes, when you when you post your creations or anything you want us to see, make sure to hashtag them at the beadsmith. Hashtag the beadsmith so we can see them. Thank you. All right. We have our clasp attached. We're going to pick up another. You want to pick up a gold 15 for this colorway. And you're going to sew all the way back through again. And make sure that's pulled really tight. And then you can go through the 15 and back through and through the 15 and then weave your thread into your piece to secure the thread and trim it. And you can go back to where your tail thread was from the beginning. Take your stopper bead off if it's still on there. Secure your thread in the beadwork. There's my not yet tan arm. So you can see that I'm gonna have just enough room on mine to add a nice little toggle or magnetic clasp, which I like. So that's my clasp allowance. Wow, I just have to show you close-ups of these colors. So, I have a question here. How do you purchase these beads? If because we don't sell directly to you guys, well, you have to go to your favorite bead shop or online bead reseller and ask them for Beadsmith's beads in Bondelli colors. We have them in the Gem Duos and we have them in Paisley Duos, Super Duos, and of course, the ginkgo beads. The symbol elements really do elevate a piece. Whenever you bring metal into a piece, it always does. And they're just so easy and fun to use because they're designed so smartly to go with all these bead shapes. So Joni, you had asked about purchasing the beads and I see Leslie Pope online there. If you want to get into a chat with her and she can talk to you about um, about your needs but for everybody else any other questions about this I know there are lots and lots of fun to make so you can find these and other quality yummy wonderful fun inspiring beadsmith beads, tools, and supplies 
from your favorite bead reseller. I'm Leslie Rogalski, creative director for The Beadsmith, saying, I love beads. See ya.